Do you want to revolutionise the, the, the club circuit? I'd like to feel that we're doing something new all the time. Within a matter of weeks, Steve and Rusty had outgrown Billy's, and they moved it to a club in Common Garden called Blitz. It soon became the hippest place in London. Are you ready yet? Not yet. I'm taking my time. Tuesday night was the best night of the week, without doubt. Everything revolved around going to the Blitz. The whole week would be taken up finding something new to wear for the next Tuesday night. If a person's got enough style, they can get away with anything. Absolutely anything. The Blitz. There were a lot of fabulous nobodies. Kids who thought they were famous already. They were lovely little things. Blitz was an amazing place. It was like walking onto a film set. We were really too young to be part of the...
choose any character you want to. What they're creating is a kind of off-the-rack mythology, soured with the second-hand celebrities thrust upon them by the media. Kids are raiding the rails of theatrical costumes to drape themselves in stardom's trappings, turning their own image into an 8x10 glossy, creating a self-centred style in which each of them can be both the star and the fan, the photographed and the photographer. Go ahead. Good. OK, Jay, uh, Patty, look up. Good. 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 Carry on. Good. Fine. Okay, who else have we got here? The sightseers and the sights have become a reflection of each other. Self-consciousness is now holding sway in the King's Road. Every passer-by an audience, every audience waiting its turn to enter centre stage. The same King's Road pubs, which in their day provided a haven for such fashionable dissenters as Oscar Wilde and Rex Whistler, are today offering rippled glimpses of 80s artistic exotics. Outside which Londoners now take their pleasure in pirate postures. It's part of a new King's Road mood that's half a fashion and half a way of looking at the world. Its high priestess is a former singer with another saltwater hero, Adam and the Ants, World's End manageress, Jordan. Well, I just think that in a time of sort of economical depression at this moment, um, with people like Margaret Thatcher who, who put such a great um, downer on people, that um, the inclination is for people to look rich and look healthy and look up. Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren, who made all these clothes and, in fact, are responsible for starting all this um, fashion, um, they really appreciate and were very, very impressed with certain um, uh, historical minorities, such as the pirates, the Apache Indians, um, Louis XIV type figures who were in the French court. And um, they appreciated their mode of living and their style and their dress. And so what she's done is try to take part of that sort of 18th century dress and modernize it and make it for, for young to any age of people, but make it look very street wearable, very bright, very rich looking. This is a part of her new collection. It's called a jungle beachwear collection. It's the sort of thing you could imagine being worn on a sort of Caribbean beach when you're up to your uh, knees in salty water. You know, they explain that this is the hope of Britain, really. This fashion, this fashion, um, the shop, in fact, and the designs that come from it are the, um, the great British hope and uh, will influence. The market has two centres for hanging out and exchanging information. One is the coffee bar where purchases are compared, hairstyles are admired, and as ever, mutual photography takes place.
but it's here to Rusty's record cage that every Bowie look-alike must come to ask Saturday's most important question, where's it at tonight? Because although nightclubbing is central to the poser's games plan, its special feature is that the place to snap and be snapped changes week by week. Its location may be passed on only by word of mouth. So as evening grows, the glam rock gets louder and the questions more eager. Tonight it's planets in Piccadilly's Burlington Arcade. As with all poser nightclubbing venues, admission is by exquisite appearance only. Because every object of artistic beauty requires careful maintenance, the powder room gets as crowded as the dance floor. Here again, lips and faces are renewed while outside the music continues to beat and the cosmetic industry to rejoice. <laughs> When the fellas leave the floor, it's a different picture, but not very different. <laughs> More emphasis seems to be placed on the eyes, more in the way of friendly advice. Do you have a pen? No. I like it. That's a bit of blood. Hey, is this on the This is Steve Strange. Welcome. Of those three things, of the fashion as well, which is the priority now? Well, it's obviously Visage. Visage, Visage is always taking first place with music. I mean, for the last two years, we've been busy with clubs, but because of contracts and management, we haven't been able to do anything musically. But now Visage is back. This is our new single, The Love Glove. Now, who's the lineup of the band now, then? Um, myself and Rusty. And then there's Steve Barnacle, Andy Barnett, and Gary Barnacle. We've just been in Egypt, in Kenya, doing the history of the Visage documentary. And then that's going to be released with the album Beat Boy, which is coming out in the middle of October. And a tour as well, perhaps? A tour, because the band now is a, a permanent band. We'll be doing a tour in January. That will be good news. Good luck with the single, Steve. Thanks for coming down. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Steve.